Now finding that wiring, uh, you know, broken wire shouldn't be too hard, but I did get this new toy and I figure this is a perfect time to try it out. I saw this on Matt's uh, Schrodinger's Box channel when he was diagnosing a Nissan Maxima with a, a wiring harness problem for an oxygen sensor. It's the Power Probe ECT 2000 open and short uh, locator. So basically what it does is you hook it up to the battery and it sends a signal I think 8, eight kilohertz or so on, on the signal wire and then you use this wireless pickup to uh, see where you know if the wiring is sound. So let's hook this up and give it a whirl and then uh, fix the problem. All right, so here's the here's the transmitter. It's showing open circuit on that ground wire. And using our little pickup here, you know we can set the sensitivity. So let's lock it in. You know it's good here on the wiring harness. You can see it's not getting through until we get to right around here. So the wiring break is right near the throttle body. So I say you'll just pull on it and it should just the insulation just rip. <clears throat> Wherever it's broken. Or not. <clears throat> The other way to do it is just probe, you know, with a little pin on the wire and see where the break is. So let's, uh, let's try that with the scope. Now I have my test light hooked to battery positive. So whenever it finds a ground, it'll light up. But I can't see that in the sunshine too well. There you go. And, uh, you know, first check here. It's not lighting up, so we do have a bad ground, like we know. Now let's, uh, my camera will stay. I'm just gonna probe this wire along its length. There's no ground there. Poke your finger. No ground there. Let me use an actual uh, piercing tool because I don't want to bleed too much. All right, so I got the piercing tool hooked up with a test light, and I guess I want you guys to see the test light. So it's not lighting right there. Let's go down the line. Closer right here. Still not lighting. Open up this harness a little more. It's a little oily here, but. Still no ground there. This clip out of the way. Test light still works. Keep checking your equipment.
See that? It's good. It's not good. Well, So this tool isn't foolproof either. You have to set the sensitivity. Actually, as I'm fiddling with the harness right here, the tool is saying short circuit, open circuit. So we're, we're getting close. Don't you feel, feel good when you're right about to find the problem? Get this thing out of the way. Right in here. Keep unwrapping it. I want to catch this on camera right now. I gotta cut this insulation open. They did a good job wrapping it up. Getting close. Oh, I guess so. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Why they replaced the perch saw now, you know? There it is. <laughs> Let's uh, get this soldered up and redo our checks. So check this out. From the back side, the side I couldn't see, there's actually a cut in the harness. Now so where the heck did this come from? Look at that. So wires don't generally break on their own, well unless it's a Chrysler I guess. Um, so is this rubbing on somewhere? I see some Someone like chiseled this plastic off. The harness is supposed to be held down here in this little channel like that, but there's a cut in the harness. So that's definitely where our problem is. And uh, I don't know, we'll get this fixed up and maybe ask the vehicle about some history if uh, any wiring repairs have been done or why this is. Uh, next to this perch solenoid which has been replaced recently but yeah let's get this fixed up and ship it all right I'll just show you my favorite way of doing wiring repairs so I put a little piece of shrink wrap on the wire I cut insulation off both ends make sure the copper is clean on the wire itself and then this little trick I picked up on YouTube actually might have been Eric the car guy uh, use a little just a you know, a uh, thick gauge copper wire bent with two little clips on it to hold the wire in place while you uh, solder it. I think that's that's pretty uh, pretty neat trick. You don't need to fumble around. I'm using my Radio Shack 
butane torch. Too bad they're out of business here, at least here in State College. I've had this thing for a while. It's also been across the country on motorcycles, so it's kind of beat, but it works great. So let's uh, do this little repair. I'm going to set the camera up some here so maybe you can see. So there's a torch. Just using a flux cord solder. Heat up your wire first before you touch the solder to it. It's definitely hot enough. Tone it down a little bit. Make sure the wires are together. Heat up the wires and let the solder melt onto the wire. Like that, see it just flows. No flux required since the wires are very clean. Do both sides, let it flow, and we're good. Take our little clip off. Slide the heat shrink right over the repair. And then just use a lighter to uh, toast it on there. Good as new. We'll just redo this conduit and uh, should be good to go. All right, there's the wiring repair, all neatly wrapped up. I even zip tied it to the uh, little tray there so it wouldn't get cut again. All right, one problem solved. Let's uh, keep moving here. The intake air temp sensor. I'm on the tan wire, just uh, using that special flat back probing tool that came with the ECT2000. Now it's showing an open circuit right now. Obviously it's not short at the ground. So uh, let's let's see if we can find where this wire is broken. It's good here, it comes down here through this harness. Actually I'm going to lock the sensitivity. So let's see, where does it go here? Back here, on top of the intake manifold. Good there. It's good here. See, it's tricky sometimes with the harnesses. The wire can be kind of on the back of the harness. So we're still good back here. And it goes to this big black box. I mean, this is a really fat harness. So, farthest I can see is at this juncture right here. Now, I want to see if I can find this wire at the computer and just double check we're not getting a signal there. And, well, we'll start digging at this tight bend here. Uh, maybe we'll check for, uh, you know, rubbing on that conduit and whatnot. Alright. You guys won't believe this. 
So I started uh, unwrapping the harness. You know, so the tool, the ECT2000 showed that the signal ended somewhere right here. So I found a convenient place for the where the electrical tape started and started unwrapping it. And lo and behold, what the heck is this? Wow, that's the tan wire right there. Let me check it out. Isn't that nuts? And we see some more harness damage right here. That blows my mind. How, how could it even, uh, did it rub through or what? But there's our broken wire and there's another wire that's looks like it's been cut or something was going on here. So just for kicks let's grab our little probe and see if the wire is good to that point. I'm starting to love this tool. Thank you Matt for uh, demonstrating its capability. Sometimes you need to Reset the batteries. All right, here we go. Lock that in. There it is. So see it's on the bottom of the harness, so it's having a hard time picking it up. So that was a little luck on my part. But it got us real close. So again, let's uh, tape this up. Solder, it, solder wire in, some liquid electrical tape on that one that's partially cut. And uh, we'll see if our intake air temp code goes away. Alright, it's all coming together now. Find more clues. See the, these uh, zip ties that are cut? These are holding the wiring loom into this plastic tray all along there. So my hypothesis is someone got a little too happy with the knife and uh, started cutting the wiring harness instead of just cutting the zip ties up. I mean this is supposed to be held on here at each one of these spots by a, uh, a zip tie. And I already found two cut ones. And uh, yep, a little uh, trigger happy with the, with the knife and there you go, cut wires. I mean you can see that's not just a broken wire, that's been cut like diagonally like that. And there are cuts here, that's the other end of it. And you see that wire got damaged. What a mess! So either they're trying to find a broken wire in here, or I don't know what happened. Or, or when they're replacing this purge solenoid, you know, they wanted to cut these zip ties, okay. They cut this one, they damaged the ground wire for the throttle position sensor. And uh, they got a code for that, so they're like, well, let's, uh, let's keep digging. <laughs> and uh, they damaged the wire for the intake air temp sensor down there. So uh, basically, it all turned into a big mess. And uh, well, now it's here and we're going to make it better, right? Well, let's just quickly verify our wiring repair for the intake air temp sensor before we wrap the harness back up. So let's go to our. Uh, Back to our scanner. So there's still our memory codes. Let's uh, let's just look at our data. Bingo! Intake air, 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Call that one a fix. Let's wrap up this harness and 
clear these codes and finally take it for a spin. Well, now that we got our wiring issue straightened out, we still have the, uh, the issue with the throttle body, you know, stuck at 19%, so it's probably carboned up. So I want to take that off and clean it. So let's look at our sensor data for the throttle body and see if it's uh, indeed carboned up and uh, um, like uh, the troubleshooter said it should be at one volt fully closed and it's at 1.14 which is 19 percent open so it says TP desired angle is 20 indicated angle is 19 Let's start it up. And what I want to do is reset the codes. So we still have those, one, two, three, four. So let's clear those. Sure. Continue. No codes present, all right. Let's go back to our data. Desired. Well, they are agreeing. So, uh, you know, maybe it's not an issue. And you see TPS 1 voltage is 1.1 and voltage 2 is 1.12. That's great. So I'm going to take it for a spin, give it a little shakedown, and uh, we'll see if we still need to clean this throttle body. So like what I'm seeing here, we're just in drive, you know, park, parked or standing still, and our TPS 1 and 2 voltage are at 1.04, which is about 15% desired and indicated angle. Put it in park. There we go. One volt on the money. So we don't need to clean the throttle body. That's, uh, that's good, it'll save the customer some money. I shut it off, turn it back on. So for startup, we're at 17%. Start it up, and see our desired idle. Oh, where's our desired idle? 600. And we're uh, right where we're supposed to be. We can call this one a fix. Alright guys, thanks for watching. After our test drive, everything looks good. We did get one code. It says P0802 TCM mill request circuit. Kind of weird, but... Um, well, let's uh, let's see what that means. Zero. What was it? Zero two zero eight zero two. PCM is detecting an incorrect voltage on the TCM mill request circuit. Well. Uh, I don't know. Check engine light's not on. It's a brand new code. I think we'll uh, leave it for now. Maybe do a little digging on what that is. But anyways, that's it. Well, I guess I lied about being done with that truck. So that code, uh, you know, the check engine light comes on a couple days after it leaves here. That's that's not good. So let's. Um, See what we can find in this P0802 code. 
uh, I'm all, all data right now since uh, the troubleshooter wasn't very uh, helpful in this case. So it says the transmission control module malfunction indicator lamp request circuit signals the PCM <clears throat> that the TCM is requesting a uh, mill illumination. So they have one wire specifically for the transmission control module to request the check engine light to come on. So let's uh, let's see what set, can set this code and if we have uh, another wiring issue. All right, so let's look uh, down the list here. Conditions for setting the DTC is PCM is detecting an incorrect voltage level on the TCM mill request circuit. All right. What what is the correct voltage? Let's uh, keep reading here. An action taken. The control module illuminates the check engine light the second consecutive ignition cycle that the diagnostic runs and fails. <clears throat> Interesting. So next time we uh, it runs this test, it'll throw the check engine light. And then we have uh, freeze frame failure records. All right. I don't know if those are going to be helpful. I mean, it's just a simple circuit. And then conditions for clearing it. So here's our flow chart. And it just tells you to its initial three steps. Okay, so if it says if the DTC fails this ignition, go to step four. Here's step four. Turn it off the ignition, disconnect the TCM, connect the DMM for, from the TCM mill request circuit at the TCM harness connector to a good ground. So we can just connect the test light. And uh, if it lights up, so turn on the ignition with the engine off <clears throat> and look for battery voltage on that wire. Okay. Well, actually, in this case, if it's a low current circuit, our test light might, might not light, so we should use a voltmeter for this test. And then it says, if, if it does, go to step 5. If no, go to step 6. Well, let's see step 5. Test the TCM mill request circuit for short to voltage. Repair as necessary. So if that wire is always hot, we'll, uh, we'll see voltage on there all the time. And step six is if we didn't get battery voltage in that wire when we turn the key on, then we have to test this wire for an open circuit. Okay, it's a good place to start. So let's see where the TCM lives. Let's dig out this wire. I already pulled up a wiring diagram of the TCM. This is again from BBB Industries. <clears throat> so at our TCM, we have a transmill request signal, and that's wire 25 on connector 1. And it's dark blue wire, and it goes straight, no connectors or anything, oh, sorry, straight down to connector 2. We have the gas version, so pin 12 on connector 2 at the PCM, which is actually right next door to the TCM. So physically, these modules are located right up here. So the transmission control module is right on top of the radiator shroud here, and the computer itself, the PCM, is right here. So let's pop this cover off, do a voltage check right at the connector here. You can back, pro back probe it, and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, got the TCM transmission control module out kind of a pain because you have to unplug the connectors before you take it out and it's kind of crammed in here. But here we have two connectors. Connector 1 is the clear, connector 2 is the red. Opened up the back cover here and there's our guy. Dark blue wire, pin number 25. So we'll back probe that and uh, I'll get you focused on the on the Varus here on our graphing multimeter. I'll use a tripod to avoid the uh, the shaking. That improve the video quality, right? Keep the viewers happy. All right. Well, 
Can you see the live number? Here, there you go. So zero, zero volts right now. There you go. Test our meter. 12.8 live. All right, great. So let's back probe our blue wire. We have zero volts right now, so when I turn the key on, it should come up to 12 volts according to the flow chart. Eleven point one. Do a little wiggle test. Push in the harness. Don't worry, that was just my ground. Let's reattach this somewhere less intrusive. See that? So I don't really like that right now. You can see um, Here's where the wiring harness goes. It goes from from our TCM, and the main harness goes under the computer and comes up right here. Let's see, make sure that's the right one. Yep, and then it comes to this really fat one to the power distribution box and back to the computer. So as I'm wiggling it down here, you can see the little dropouts. That might not seem like much, but when you're driving, this thing uh, acts up. And the key to uh, Finding intermittent problems like this is don't disturb the harness until you have your scope hooked up. Because if you move it and it fixes itself, you're never going to find the issue. Like right now, you know, we're close. But I'm still not really, uh, I'm going to find a better ground here. Well, that doesn't work. Okay, so we're steady. Not too bad. See, now I fixed it. Right in here. Well, I'll get you a shot once I find it. So uh, our wiggle test did not show anything conclusive. And uh, you see our check engine lights on because we had the TCM unplugged and the key on. So, you can see uh, in OBD2 mode, our trouble code is the P0802. So let's 
The only thing we can do here is clear it, go for another test drive, and then uh, if nothing comes back, just let the customer know that that code may return if it's an intermittent, and uh, once it's a more you know hard fault, then it'll be a lot easier to track down. But you definitely want to give them a heads up because uh, <laughs> if you say everything's great and the check engine light comes back on in a couple days, well, that doesn't make you look very uh, very professional. So let's uh, uh, clear our codes. Uh, 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 this way. Let's see back. Um, and clear codes is we were just here. Can't even clear codes. What is this? You guys see it? Am I blind? Clear emissions related data. Uh, really? No status. Readiness monitors. Well, I guess I guess that's the one, huh? Continue. Continue. All right. Data has been cleared. Control codes. Shouldn't have any. All right, good. So let's take it for a spin. See what happens.